we're doing today is we're going to make a anvil out of a piece of railroad track. Uh, typically I lay everything out on a whiteboard before I start a video, but uh, my building's under construction. I don't have a whiteboard, so we're just going to spitball here. I kind of wrote down some things that I wanted to mention. Um, the reason this is a good project is uh, you use a variety of tools, uh, especially oxy fuel when you're starting out uh, cutting in uh, whether you're using acetylene or whatever uh, fuel gas you're using. It uh, is a great project for oxy fuel cutting because you're going to start out cutting it with oxy fuel, roughing it up with the oxy fuel process. Uh, then you're going to go into um, grinding with a variety of different grinding discs, not just a hard stone, but also a flap disc and a wire wheel and all that. And you got to get used to grinding if you're going to be in the welding industry because a lot of things, uh, there's a lot of grinding in the welding industry. Um, there's also, um, we're going to use a MIG process on some of the rounded edges to kind of smooth them out from the cuts. Uh, you don't have to do that, you can grind it if you want, but we're going to use a MIG process. There's also a stick process because we're going to hard face the top of it. So we're going to put a um, hard facing on the top just so if you're pounding on stuff it doesn't, uh, you know, dent the actual anvil when you're done. Uh, and last, you can uh, use a drill press to drill holes in each part of the anvil. Uh, if you do that, you're going to want to heat treat it. Um, because this is the railroad track is hard. If you take a torch, heat it up to uh, like an orangish color, let it cool on its own, it'll drill just fine. Also, you don't want to put it in any kind of saws. If you put it in a saw, you're going to fry the blade. I guarantee it. There's no chance you're not going to fry the blade. Do not put it in any kind of uh, band saw or whatever. So um, all them tools are um, used in this. Um, we're going to not use a drill press because I don't have one here. We're doing this out in the field, so. Uh, we're kind of limited on what we have for tools. Uh, a lot of people like to use the drill press though so they can bolt it down to the counter after they're done. And it gives you, a, it's a project that gives you something at the end that you can take home, put in your garage or wherever, and actually use instead of uh, doing a project where you have to throw into a scrap bin. So we'll get, we'll get started on this. So we'll start out with the oxy fuel process and rough it into shape and we'll go from there. This is our setup. We're about to start our uh, anvil project here. I just took the uh, piece of railroad track right here, I threw it in the bucket of a tractor. I got my torches over here, keep the hoses out from the drop zone of all the hot stuff. Uh, the bucket should contain all the, the uh, slag and dross and metal that we're cutting off. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the anvil for a before shot. Uh, then we'll get into uh, marking up our uh, cuts. This is our piece of railroad track before we uh, go ahead and mark what we're going to cut off of it here. And you could be fairly artistic with this project. Um, there's no limitations as, as far as dimensions go. It's kind of uh, a creative project. So next we'll go ahead and we'll mark what we're going to cut with the torches. We'll get started here. I just got done marking out our anvil here out of the piece of railroad track. And I think I'm going to do a long front end, kind of a stumpier back end. That's the top. Now we're going to roll down here. And that's your side marks. You can kind of see the anvil in it. So what we're going to do now, get our torches ready, start cutting this baby into shape. Just got our oxygen set up. There's your bottle pressure on the right, your working pressure on the left. You can see it's right around 60 PSI. I'll take a look at the acetylene. Here's our acetylene, bottle pressure on the left, working pressure on the right, and you can see it. it says it's right above 10, but when I crack it, it goes right down to 10. So make sure you crack them and see if there's a variance on your pressure. So we're going to run right around 10. It's a good every thickness setting, because we're going to be going from really thick to, well, I guess it's all pretty thick, but uh, some of it's really thick. So we'll get started on our cuts. All right, we just finished rough cutting everything. And you can, you can see it looks like an anvil now. So what we gotta do now is going into uh, some of our grinding stuff. You can see that's, that's a thick section right there in the front of that. 
there's all the cutouts that we had so what we want to do now is make this a little bit more pretty so we're going to bust out the the uh, grinders and we're going to smooth all this up clean the bucket out and then we're probably going to have to shave that down from front to back but we want to clean it up first so we can see what we're actually doing here get rid of all that uh, slag so the second tool you're going to learn how to use here is grinders the welding industry has a lot of grinding going on so we're going to start out with just a regular stone and we're going to rough this thing up all right we went ahead and uh, cleaned up our workstation here let things cool down a little bit everything was pretty hot now we're going to go into our grinding portion here first thing i'm going to start with is your wire wheel uh, on a metabo grinder of course because metabo makes the most badass grinder known to man but we're going to go after it with a wire wheel first so we can get rid of all this uh, loose stuff. Then after we get done with the wire wheel, then we'll go in with our hard stone and uh, try and smooth everything out a little bit before we go in and cut the front of that back down. So let's grind it up. Just finished up uh, our first grind, which is just a rough uh, wire wheeling, then a, a grinder. We don't want to grind anything we're going to cut off still. Uh, we had a little bit of an error right there, so I'm going to hit that with the torch. Then over here on the front of it, you can see that white line, we're going to nip that off. Then what we'll have to do is uh, go into a pretty good grind. Then we had a hole we're going to have to fill in with a MIG welder. We'll grind that off too. But for now, we're going to finish up these two torch cuts and then our torches are going to get put away and it's going to be all grinding. We just finished up the last of our torch work. We went straight across, well right there. And then we moved up here. That's probably your most important cut. You're going through some really thick stuff there. And if you get, you know, uneven going this way, it'll look kind of funky. But we got her good. Now we're going to move right back into, uh, we're actually going to relocate to a table with a vise. And we're going to grind the hell out of this. And then we're going to fill it in with some MIG weld if we have uh, some errors. So we'll move into phase two of the grinding. All right, we've relocated into a, uh, or onto a table, it's got a vise. What I'm gonna do for grinding now, it's just a hard disc, or hard stone, and then some wire wheeling, because we're gonna do the, uh, the round parts, we're gonna, we're gonna MIG weld those in, and just blend them all together. The most important part for the grinding is gonna be right here on the horn of this anvil. We wanna get that all nice and smooth, and then the other parts, front and back, right there. The round ones, we're just going to wire wheel, get all the uh, carbon out of it. Because if you hit carbon with the MIG welder, it's going to put all kinds of porosity and holes in your weld. So, you don't want that. What we did here is we did a rough grind on it. You can see some of them deep drag lines, those grooves. We're going to go ahead and fill those in with the MIG welder now. And then hit it with another grind. And like I said before, these curved pieces, we're going to turn our MIG welder way down and sweep in a nice little weld in there and blend it all together. Rather than grind it right there. And then over here on the ends here, and there's a repair from, I'm not taking responsibility for that, I didn't do it, but 
when it was cut out, yeah, it got gouged. So we're to repair that, then regrind it. Uh, if you don't know how to MIG weld, you can grind all that. But because we know how to MIG weld, we're going to MIG weld it. Take some of the pain out of the grinding. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the MIG welder and get it on. Here's where we're at. We just finished up grinding with the stone. We MIG welded in um, the curved spots. So you can see, we just blended it in with a low wire feed speed MIG weld. Kind of blend it all together. Now we're going to go get the last grinding disc that we need, and that's just going to be a flap disc. And we're going to finish polishing up the horn. And we'll move on from there. Right, this is the finish before the flapper disc and you can see that there's a lot of grind marks in it. Not quite as smooth. That's the flapper disc. I just put it on there. I think it's 36 grit. It's a nice little, puts a nice little finish on her. So we're going to hit that up and then we'll review the finish. This is the finish after the flapper disc. You can see it's pretty damn smooth. Last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw a stick welding process in. And right up on the top here, I'm going to do a surfacing weld to build it up. Typically, you do you use a hard facing rod to make it hard, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to use 7018. Get the point across, and we'll wire wheel it one more time, and that'll wrap up the anvil project. Okay, just went and grabbed a generator welder. I think it weighs as much as that little tractor. Now what we're doing is we put a line on that, and we're going to pad from the line over with good old 7018. If I was doing this seriously. I'd probably use a hard facing rod, but this thing really is just a toy for your garage, so we'll get the weldner. Just got done hard facing the top, then we gave it a final wire wheel. We can zoom in here on the hard facing. It's actually not really hard facing, it's just 7018, but if you're doing it for real, I would put hard facing on it. There's the horn. You can see those MIG welds that we put on the side so you don't have to grind it, or you can grind it either way. Take this thing, throw it in your garage, you'll be surprised at how much you use it. It's a nice little project. Another view of it, I guess. 
that's just a servicing weld. So if you're good at stick welding, go ahead and weld it. You don't need to have that on there, but it just kind of looks cool, and it's just another process to put into the project. I just finished up our anvil project here. It came out pretty good. I think we had roughly six hours into it. Uh, things the project included, we'll start off with oxy fuel cutting. We're talking grinding. We used three different uh, discs, hard disc, wire wheel, and a flat disc. We also did a MIG welding process on the edges and a stick welding uh, padding on the top here. So it was a nice little project. You got a lot of different things involved with it. Uh, we're going to head out here, I guess. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld.